Hello and welcome to the Wine Dude, tasting as you go. Hey guys, how's it going? That's Geyser Peak, right behind me, up on the hill. This is Geyser Peak Winery. This is Chris Munsell. That's right. <laughs> yes. You got it. All right. No worries. So what are we looking at here? Well, this is the heart of the Alexander Valley, where the winery is located right centrally in that appellation. And right now, we're in the town of Geyserville, uh, a thriving metropolis of all four people or whatever's there. And the little mountain that you see up behind us, that is Geyser Peak. And they, it's a geothermal area where there are actually steam geysers and they've been capped for geothermal energy but on a cool day you can see the vents coming up and whatnot and so that's why they call it geyser peak now, our winery was built in 1880 and so it took the name of that local landmark 1880 huh 1880 you look so, good for your age hey you know what what do we say it's that red wine it keeps you young right <laughs> But I think the important piece for us to get from this area is how spectacular it can be for growing all sorts of types of grapes right here in one appellation. Further south you go, the cooler it is, things like Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and Pinot Noir, they do great. The further north you go, more of the Bordeaux, red varieties, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and then maybe even some Syrah or Shiraz as we call it, does really, really well from this uh, central part of the valley up north. And so we've broken our vineyards up that way too. Most of our Chardonnay and Sauv Blanc comes from the south. Here we have a bit of a mix within our own estate vineyards and then everything north is more Cabernet Sauvignon. And you can still see the tree line behind us is the Russian River. So it flows directly through this valley and gives us this great fertile area to farm our grapes. Yeah, that's what makes the soil so good. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. Well, you want to take a little tour of the winery and I'd see love some to. of the equipment? All right, I'd love to. Let's take a, let's take a walk. All right. This way? Why don't you yep. lead the way? All right. I got it. I don't know where I'm going anyway. <laughs> These are bladder presses. They have a big membrane on the inside that fills with air. It essentially pushes the berries up against the side and just pops them open. OK. What else we got? Let's head into the red cellar and we'll show where those grapes end up. Okay. Into the red cellar. The red this cellar. Is, red cellar sounds good, huh? I like that. <laughs> That's where all those great Cabernet grapes come into. We come from that distummer out there, pump through the pipes, and then put all the skins, the seeds, the juice, everything goes into the fermenters. And we do a process called pump overs, uh, where we will bring the juice from the bottom of the tank up over the top. We do that at three times a day. We run 24 hour shift because it's important to get the timing of that pump over just right. All right, cool. Very impressive. How's it going, Mick? Pretty good, and yourself? Not bad. Good. Wine dude here, we're at Ascensia Vineyard. This is our winemaker, Mick Schroeder. He's nice and ready for me, look at this. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. already open? Sure, what? What do we got here? This is the 2002 Ascensia Estate Vineyard Block Collection Cabernet. Okay, so it's from this here? This in particular came from uh, an area just down in the hill. The important thing about that particular section is the aspect. We're here in the morning, and uh, what we like about this particular site is down this hill, it gets a lot of the morning sun and not so much of the afternoon sun. This is the west over this side, and it's a pretty warm site. So, um, so for this particular wine, um, the aspect that's more easterly facing is where we make this wine from. OK. And does that have to do with just the climatology of the area? Or just um, is it that it gets Absolute. more sun or less sun? Absolutely. It's, it's all of those things. It's, uh, and that's the important thing about growing grapes and making wines, is it's the site that's important, and it encompasses all of those things. 
the climate, the soil, the aspect, um, the season, um, and what Mother Nature gives us each year. Great, great. It's a beautiful place you have to work here. Well, great wine uh, comes from beautiful places, and I think you'd agree. Absolutely. This is pretty spectacular. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely out here. All right, cool. Did I actually say lovely? Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'm liking your wine, man. Thank you. Cheers. No worries. Cheers. Okay, look around guys, Ascension Vineyard. This is the estate grown grapes, correct? For estate wine mm -hmm. for Geyser Peak. Yep. There you go. So what are we doing here? Rough job for you, you gotta taste some more wine. Oh, so, I hate that. So, <laughs> so we're gonna start with the Geyser Peak Sauvignon Blanc and we source fruit from the premium coastal regions of Northern California because we're looking to make what I call a real new world style of Sauvignon Blanc. Distinctly varietal, uh, we don't use any barrels, no oak, no, no winemaker or anything. It's just a cool fermented, stainless steel, bright varietal Sauvignon Blanc. So. Do you grow the grapes here or you take them from another place? Uh, we buy most of the fruit. Uh, we source fruit from as far south down in Monterey, south of San Francisco. A lot of it comes from our region here in Sonoma County. And then we go north up into Lake and Mendocino counties to craft a style that, uh, that I think has um, really nice, bright citrus, grapefruit, grassy aromas. Very very typical of civilian Blanc. That's strong grapefruit, you're right. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. <laughs> mm. And the palate, it's really bright and fresh, it's vibrant. It's it's a great spring, summertime style of civilian Blanc. Yeah, definitely. I like to sit outdoors with this. Absolutely. Nice and cold. Yeah, hey, what are we doing in here? Yeah, yeah. really, I mean, come on. <laughs> so that's the SB. And then uh, we're back to Alexander Valley. But I still got wine in my glass. Pick up the pace there, fella. <laughs> All right, and then we've got the Geyser Peak Alexander Valley uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Once okay. again, beautiful, deep, rich color. This time on the nose, compared to the Ascension, this one's got more of the those deep blackberry, um, dark fruit uh, characters. Absolutely. Really, very fruit dominant. Not a lot of oak character in here, just gollops of, of bright bridal Cabernet fruit. Okay, so same thing, this is not the Essentia. No, this uh, is... although some of the Essentia would have gone into to make this wine because mm -hmm. with the block collection, we're only using a very small piece of that vineyard. The rest of the vineyard is also spectacular fruit and is a great base for the Alexander Valley wine. Okay. Really juicy, juicy, vibrant Cabernet fruit. It's quite different from that other. And, that and it's softer and rounder. Mm -hmm. Just a more approachable, easier drinking style of cab. Good barbecue. Absolutely. Okay. Not bad for about, what, 16, 17 bucks? Mm-hmm. Not at all. 16, 17 bucks for great cab. Okay. You can't beat that. Cheers. Hey guys, check this out. This is their reserve tasting room. It's really cool. Come on. Come on. This place is awesome. This is where you come to do the reserve tasting. Check this place out. Pretty cool, huh? What do you think? Huh? Come up here. We got all the wines there. And what's really cool is take a look over there. You can see the entire barrel room. Now that's really cool. We're inside of Geyser Peak Winery barrel room. See the barrels? They're all over the place. And we're here with winemaker Andine Chatton. Is that right? You got it perfectly. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Wayne, dude. You're welcome.
<laughs> okay, so what are you showing me here? Well, today I want to share two of our favorite wines with you. Um, these are from the Geyser Peak Reserve series. We have a Reserve Cabernet and a Reserve Meritage wine. So what exactly is Meritage? A Meritage is a blend of the traditional Bordeaux grapes. So uh, there are white Meritages and red Meritages. The word comes from a blend of the word Merit and Heritage, hence Meritage. And for us, it's a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and Cabernet Franc. Wow, that's a lot of grapes. It's a lot of grapes. So the only one we're missing is Carmenere. Right, let's you know? see what it tastes like. All right. And I'll give you my opinion. Please have a glass of Meritage. Thank you. So we call our Meritage Reserve Alexander, and that's because we're located in the Alexander Valley, and that's our proprietary name for it to set it apart from our other wines. So if you hold that up. Yeah, I see just that. A brilliant garnet color. Wow, what a difference. And importantly with Meritage wines as well, uh, we are not trying to emulate or simulate the Bordeaux. We're just nodding to Bordeaux, but definitely doing it in our own house style. So this is 100% French oak aged, but I think you'll see the fruits distinctly California. It's got some great, beautiful berries on the nose. Really good cola structure, a little bit of spice. Did you say cola structure? Cola, yeah, like a cola nut or the, more the aromatic that you get off of a soda, but not that, you know, not obviously the spritz and none, right, right, none right. of the sweetness. It's the first time I've had a winemaker say uh, cola. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I like that. Tastes great, though. So we like to age it for a while in bottle, of course, in barrel for almost two years, well, 18 to 20 months, and then in bottle for about eight to 10 months. Okay. And of course, this is a wine, because of its structure and the grapes that it's made out of, this is a wine that's definitely age-worthy. You can put it away for five, 10, 15 years, and it will only get more complex and interesting. Oh, OK. Of course, I'm also a hedonist and like to drink things early, so yeah. it drinks pretty well upon release as well. <laughs> I'll have to get two bottles, put one away, exactly. drink the other. We always say a case and have a bottle a month for a year or something. Oh, or, that's not a bad idea. Or a idea. bottle every two months for a couple of years. Ah, I bet Sean would like that. What do you think, Sean? <laughs> Actually, that is one of the, the great things with wines is if you get more than one bottle, being able to monitor the progress and hopefully not miss the peak of it. Mm, that's very you good. You must have enjoyed that. I did. It's well, very, very, uh, I have a spice there on the back. Spice? Yeah. Some of that comes from the blending varietal. So I mentioned Cabernet and Merlot are the base of this wine, but there's also Malbec, Petit Verdot, and Cabernet Franc, and each of those brings a little bit of a different element. Cabernet Franc brings some spice. Petit Verdot brings some of that inkiness and the intensity, mm -hmm. a little bit of structure and tannin. And Malbec always lends this beautiful lifted floral aromatic. Did you say Merlot? I did say Merlot. Oh, wow, Merlot. We 14%. Like Merlot. I don't, you know, ever since the movie, uh, Merlot's getting a bad rap. And I'm saying bring back Merlot. Merlot can be a beautiful grape. That's very good. 2003 you. Reserve 2003. Alexander Meritage. That's correct. OK, cool. I'm going to also move us on now to our Reserve Cabernet. So this is going to be the antithesis of reserve meritage in that where we're looking for elegance and refinement in there, this is big and in your face and chewy and bold, and this, this is full throttle Cabernet. That's what I like. We are in the heart of the Alexander Valley, and this is what we believe where Cabernet grows best in Sonoma County. So we have the benefit of having a lot of hillside vineyards here in the area. And what's great about hillsides is that they restrict the vigor with which a vine grows and you get a lot of small berries that are very concentrated they have intense tannin flavor structure color all the great things that we love in wine okay so now is this grown on the estate or is these do these some of this out? comes off of our essentia estate which okay. i believe you visited right and uh, some of it comes from other vineyards from around the valley as well but we it's all bench land and hillside fruit and i think again as you can tell in the color quite intense in color smells awesome Wonderful. Makes me want steak. <laughs> exactly. This is a great steakhouse wine. But one of the great things with Reserve Cab is that even though it is big and chewy in your face in its youth, it also has some aging potential. It will change quite a bit, whereas the Reserve Alexander becomes deeper and more complex. Um, you lose that bright fruit as this wine ages, and some more subtle complexity comes out. You get a little bit more of a, an unsmoked cigar tobacco type character that comes out over time. So what, what is the optimum age of leaving this bottle? Oh, <laughs> that's, oh, it's so hard to guess on any of them. Um, usually seven years is probably somewhere around optimal, so you don't miss it, so it doesn't go past its peak. 
and it will develop an interesting bottle of bouquet at that time. So again, buy a case and buy a case, put yeah, away a bottle of Or a couple of bottles, or better yet, you know, just enjoy it when the time is best for you. Right. That's always my best advice. You know what? That's the philosophy of the wine dude, too. Is it? That's, yes. You'll never enjoy a bottle more than when you want it. That's right. That's... Exactly. And I say things something like, uh, like what you drink and drink what you like. I can go along with that. That's very what much we're so. trying to show people. Because it's really important that you enjoy what you're drinking. Okay, don't let anybody tell you what's good or bad because that has nothing to do with it. If you like something, then you like something. And there are a lot of amazing wines out there to enjoy. Yes, I agree. A lot of things people haven't heard of that are pretty excellent. That's why we're here. <laughs> That's great. One thing in here that I think is neat is you get a real, a wonderful roasted coffee bean character. And I just love that it's coming through so nicely right now. Yeah, it's, it's really a deep, there's a deep smell to this. And one of the other great things with this is, again, as a counterpoint to the Reserve Alexander, which was 100% French oak, this is 100% American oak. And so you get a different spice profile, and it tends to show the oak a little bit more showy. It's, um, it's quite a racy little wine. It's very good, too. Thank you. It's hard to make bad Cabernet in the Alexander Valley. Well... <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> so far, everything that we've tried up here is good. Especially from your winery. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate you that. You like this one, Daniel. And we'll think, save you some. And I know Brent will drink it. <laughs> That's Captain drink? Brent, by the way, over there. Captain Brent. Captain Brent. Good to he know flew you. us here. Oh, you're kidding. That's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Well, cheers. cheers. Thank you, wine dude. Thanks for your help. Okay, hey, here we are outside of Geyser Peak Winery. We're here with Kim Kolchecki. Kolchecki. I didn't <laughs> check that before we started rolling. Okay. That's all right. Basically, I like to think of myself as the storyteller. I'm kind of in between sales and the great folks here who work in the tasting room and make the wine here at Geyser Peak and kind of help getting the message out and help telling people all about why Geyser Peak Winery is cool, what's special about our wines. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited you guys are here today. You know what, we're having a great time here, too. There's just so much to see here at Geyser Peak Winery. And also, every time I stop, I seem to get tastes of new wine. I love this place. <laughs> My god, well, what do you got here? Well, so what I thought we would do is just break out a couple of our really, really tiny lot, tasting room only wines that if you come up and visit us at Geyser Peak, you'll have a chance to try. But we only make 100 and 200 cases of these wines we'll be tasting today, respectively, so there's just not enough for us to get it out to everyone. So the wines that you tasted with Mick in the winemaker's lab, the Sauvignon Blanc and the Alexander Valley Cabernet are both pretty widely available. The wines that you tasted with Andine in the barrel room, the Reserve Alex and the Reserve Cabernet wines, you'll tend to find those more in high-end restaurants, fine wine shops, independent retail locations, but generally you can find them pretty well distributed nationwide. And these wines are our tasting room only. Ah, OK, tasting room only. So that would start with a little 2003 Malbec. Works for you. So you've got to come here to the tasting room to try these wines. Check that out. Ooh. So there's a lot of great dark fruit character in this, a lot of really rich blackberry. There's only 100 cases of this wine produced and it was aged in 100% French oak for 15 months. Uh, ooh, I like that one. Lots of blackberry. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have the really, really big chewy tannins that you get out of the Cabernet. Mm -hmm. This one is much more austere on the palate, much more kind of sharp on the finish. It's a little bit of a shorter finish wine, but it's got that beautiful, same, wonderful, dark, opulent, classic Alexander Valley feel to it. So Malbec is a is a, its own grape. Malbec is its own grape. Okay. And this is 100% Malbec. So it's a beautiful wine, but it's not for everybody. I like it. Glad. Well, drink up, dude. We've got more. Okay. If you must. So from here, I thought we would try a little bit of the 2003 Tanat. This is also its own grape varietal. It's a really lesser known varietal. Not a lot of people work with it. It's very often a blending grape, but we think it's fun. So we have a little bit of fun and make a exclusively Tanat blend. And again, this is all 100% French oak. 
and this is about 14 months that it spends in barrel. So it's not its own grape also? Tanat is its own grape also. It's actually oh, more common in places like Uruguay and Argentina than it is yeah, here. I was gonna say, I, I don't, I never really heard of that one before. Not a lot in California. See that guys, the wine dude's learning also. I love it. Oh, that's... And with this one, you get a beautiful kind of lavender, kind of rosemary on the nose. It's really like aromatic and very, very elegant wine. Mmm. It's soft. It's very soft, very round in the mouth. It's just a fat, happy, beautiful wine. Fat, happy, and beautiful. It's kind of like me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the wine for you, wine That's dude. That's right. right. Oh. So last but definitely not least, I thought we would break out just a little fun taste of our 2004 Shiraz Port. Because our head winemaker, Mick Schroeder, who you spent some time with earlier this morning, he's from Australia. He loves Shiraz. So this is one of his favorite varietals to work with. We do a special reserve Shiraz that we only do here in the tasting room, and we make a port out of it. Most ports you'll find are Cabernet or Zinfandel based. So this is a little bit different to do a Shiraz, and it's a very different style. So this one is definitely fun. Sticky. Well, it's port. It is a sweet dessert wine. Mm. You know, that's very good. It's uh, it's very fruity actually for a, for a port. It is, and, and a lot of that's because it's made from Shiraz. Yeah. Whereas Zinfandel ports tend to get that really dark spice character and they're really, really deep and dense and dark. The Shiraz really retains a lot of its light, bright fruit. Well, plus you know the alcohol doesn't, like sometimes you drink a port and the alcohol just goes wham, it hits you. This isn't like that. Nope. This is very mellow. Geyser Peak's a mellow kind of place. Yeah, that's for sure. So we make a mellow kind of port. <laughs> yeah, one of our crew members here, we uh, we were drinking some port one night, and uh, he didn't realize it was port. <laughs> and he loved it. And he drank a lot of it. Huh, Sean? <laughs> and um, it kind of hit him over the head. <laughs> It'll catch up with you in a big hurry, yeah? You have to play it careful with port. Yeah, that's for sure. I think he'll like this one, though. I think he will. Well, we'll save a little bit for him so he can he can test for himself. <laughs> I like it. Very good. You're not drinking yours. Look at you got three glasses here. You're not even drinking it. Oh, I have to pace myself. That's a slow pace. I know. I'm pacing myself too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All day, actually. <laughs> <laughs> a little here, a little there. Yeah, well, we got more wineries, too. So, I guess that's it. I think that's it. So, okay, uh, well, I think we had a great time here today. I'm so glad you guys are here for us. Lots of good wines. You got to come up here and check this place out, you guys. There's a whole variety of wines here. Some are our estate, they're grown here. Some are blended. Some, we got a port here, which is really excellent, Shiraz port. Definitely come and check them out. They're in Sonoma. And this is the wine deal. Hey, wait up. I got something else for you to try. Here, hang on. Hey, it's me. Get rid of that one. Take this one. It's packed. Oh. All right, this is really wild, this stuff. Probably never had this before. Sparkling Shiraz. Sparkling Shiraz? <laughs> Don't do Whoa. that at home. <laughs> Have a look at that stuff. All right, here. It's purple. Exactly. It's Sparkling purple champagne. Shiraz. You got it. So oh. what this is, it's, this wine is made exactly the same way that you make a premium champagne, except the base wine is this dark, inky Shiraz as the base goes through what they call the method champenoise process, and at the end of the process, you end up with red bubbles. Wow. Oh, that's good. Isn't that good? Uh, just an explosion of bubbles in your mouth, just like champagne. Wow. So how do we get the bubbles in there? Uh, it's a secondary fermentation that happens inside of this bottle. So it's the yeast produced the, the carbon dioxide, because it's got a cork in it, it traps the CO2 in the wine, exactly the way they make champagne. Wow. A very common style in Australia, but not something that you find here in the United States very often. So once again, 
only available here in the tasting room. So your Australian influence is causing California wine to break new ground. You're right there, mate. I love it. Cheers. Very Thanks nice. for coming. Okay, you can only get this here, guys. And let me tell you, this is good. Matter of fact, this is mine. <laughs> You're here with the wine, dude. No Tasting worries. as you go. Cheers. From San Francisco, take the 101 North about an hour and a half to Geyserville. Exit on Canyon Road. Make a left. Go to Chianti Road and make a right. Go about a quarter mile and Geyser Peak is on the left. Well, thanks for joining us on our latest Wine Dude podcast. Geyser Peak Winery in beautiful Geyserville, California, up in the Alexander Valley in the wine region of Sonoma. This place was awesome. It better be they've been around since 1880. Wow, what an operation. We had such a great time. I want to thank winemakers Mick Schroeder, Andine Chapman, manager Chris Munsell, and Kim Kolchecki for their time and their excellent wine, especially the sparkling Shiraz. That stuff rocks. You can check out Geyser Peak online at www.geyserpeak.com. You can also check out our website at www.thewinedude.com. Remember, drink what you like and like what you drink. Don't let anyone tell you what's good or what's bad. Trust your own palate and have a good time. And join me, the wine dude, tasting as you go. 